Hi, everybody. Welcome to the QB School. I am JT O'Sullivan. Today, X's and O's, we are talking the bow concept. Fired up for this one. Lock in. Let's get it going. Welcome to the QB School. So the idea for this video came from Coach Craig Barker. <laughs> Could you? I couldn't help myself. Could you look at breaking down McVeigh's and Shanahan's bow passing concept. I would like to learn more about route specifics and QB reads. It looks like you can use it with a RAM read away from Mike's drop with another concept on the backside. Thanks. I clarify exactly what he's talking about. Yes, want more details on coaching points and how it is taught to quarterbacks and wide receivers. Coach Barker, outstanding question. Thanks for the qualifier as well. So the bow concept, the way that we're going to describe it on this channel within this kind of overarching principles of offensive football is a two-person combination concept. It is an in or a basic or a cross as the inside wide receiver. And then what we're going to call an arrow, which is also referred to as a whip in some offenses, but it is essentially where you're going to fake a slant in or fake a diagonal in, cross the track of the number two, and then have the ability to come out flat versus man-to-man -man coverage. And so it's used a bunch of different ways. I would say most likely it's going to be a backside route or a secondary read, meaning that there's going to be something there, whether it's a one, whether it's an alert, that if that's not there, then you're going to go through this kind of bow concept. And I think it's extremely versatile. So you can put it with a bunch of different things. I've had it read a bunch of different ways, whether it's a pure progression, whether it's a middle field open close read, whether it's a RAM read for you. I personally am not a huge fan of RAM reads for a number of different reasons, probably a different video in that regard to answer that one. But we're, I'm excited to talk about it. There are a number of little tricks of the trade here as far as this concept and what it looks like. I'm going to show you a number of different examples, talk about some of my favorites. But I think if you're talking about just overarching kind of principles of the concept, the easiest way to teach it for the arrow runner, so the outside wide receiver, who is technically why it's called, uh, technically, I'm assuming this is why it's called, no one ever explained it to me. Uh, the bow is tethered to the arrow. Arrow is a concept similar to smash or this number one receiver where you cross the track on the number two and come out versus man and can settle down versus zone. It's basically a hybrid of spot. And so you come in, you come out, that's arrow. You put a cross with the arrow instead of a corner and that's bow. You're welcome. So very complicated. But the tricks of the trade as far as the teaching and coaching points are to teach that arrow runner to cross the track of the number two, which in this case is the crosser or the basic or the in, to just give them a landmark of where they need to be. And the read is usually cross or basic to arrow. Now, that doesn't mean that it's one to two. It can be something front side, two, three. It can be three, four. It can be, uh, you know, based off alerts, how we get to this bow concept, but it is a very versatile concept and it does take advantage of what usually you're doing in the second level of your defense, usually linebacker types. So great opportunities for multiple runaways, great opportunities to kind of uh, dictate where you are in some matchup areas if teams are trying to banjo certain things. So we're going to look at a bunch of different images fired up for this one. Thank you for the question. Let's get into it. All right, so here we go. This is from the old New Orleans Saints books, Mike McCarthy days. Here's that bow concept, and there it is right here. So what is it exactly? It is that arrow right here, arrow. So to me, I don't love this drawing. In fact, when I taught this concept or this route at the high school level, we made it just a straight line. I think it's a little bit better. I know some teams that do it off like a slant. Either way, would you do a five-yard in and back out like this? To me, it's almost never like this banana like this. So the drawing doesn't necessarily, uh, the map doesn't uh, match the terrain here, in my opinion. But we're crossing the track of the number two, right? This is the number one receiver. This is the number two receiver. So we cross the track. Versus zone, we can settle down. Versus man, we're going to run away. And that's kind of where you see this dotted line right here. So we're in. Nobody's with us. We settle down right there. That's the arrow route. The bow is when you match it with a cross so now this is the cross concept so we're just up and it's just a 10 yard in speed move basically you don't want to come up here and choppy chop your feet and come in here like this even though i'll tell some stories when we are on the packers plays where we definitely did that a lot with donald driver back in the day 
But you can see here, this is a backside concept. So we've got one right here, two right here. This is just a version of smash. This is true arrow over here. And then we've got the bow on the backside, three, four. So just pure progression. You're welcome. Old school read, right to left. Again, under center, it's going to be a five-step drop in gun minus two. I'm not going to go through the protection here, but six-person slide protection. You can see the hot issues. Again, the hots are going to be up to the front side. Don't worry about it for the bow concept because we're blocked up to the left. But again, all it is, again, the coaching point is really important. Cross the track of the number two versus zone. Can settle there, and it's basically just a spot route. Verse man, you're going to run out. That's that dotted line, and it's paired with an in. And so whether, you, you know, I don't love the ram read element of it. There are a bunch of times where I've done this in my life where it's closed, open, you know, two man, maybe an auxiliary just because the corner so good, but lots of different ways to be able to read this. This is just one example. And the other thing to pay attention to here is this is the concept we're talking about bow. It can be paired with damn near anything on the front side or auxiliary routes with it. Next one here, same thing, bow again, backside bow. There it is. Now, go through the whole play here. Zebra is the personnel, 11 personnel. Wide right, open is the formation. Wide right, open sets the Y in a split, four-yard split. Two jet is the protection. Winston is the front side concept. In fact, I think I have an X's and O's video on Winston. And then bow is the backside concept. So again, pure progression. One, two, three, four. Easy, all the way across. Simple clean right to left left to right however you want to do it again full field read so how often do you really get to a backside arrow you know in a non seven on seven setting i don't know but on paper it looks pretty good here is the bow concept but in green bay we just called it cross it's the same play and it actually makes a little bit more sense in this west coast setting to call it cross in my opinion because the play is arrow so arrow is the play if we didn't call cross this eagle player would be running a corner, but because we called eagle cross, and eagle is just the fourth receiver in 10 personnel, old school West Coast term. So 10 personnel, 11 personnel. You can see the open closed read here. I'm not sure I necessarily agree with that. You can tell when you're really old, when you start disagreeing with reads that your coaches tell you, you realize they're just not necessarily authorities on every single thing. You can disagree. But you can see here, this is a 1-1 one, one read, so you need to know the shell as far as what they're asking you to do. This also looks like a bevel-ish playbook for me with all these like random spots to be able to sit down versus zone. No shots, just truth. Here, as far as different areas where you see these little dots on these lines, that usually means you can settle versus zone. So again, coaching point, just to reiterate it, cross the track of the number two. Boom, right there, to give them a landmark to know how far they want to go in because you don't necessarily want this guy coming into the tackle box and coming out. That's really a different type of play that I'll mention at some point over the course of the video. But this is this is really just in and out. This is, And this is a better drawing. You can see here, this is not like that banana in. This is that straight 45, sell it like you're going across the field, put your foot in the ground and come out of it. Really nice, clean, simple read. Here's about the closest version I could find in the digit system. So now we're into the digit Mike Martz days for me. Uh, we didn't run true bow. And again, true bow for me would be kind of in and out here. Now I will say that there are elements of this that I really love. There's a lot going on here. And this again, isn't true bow. So don't get freaked out with some differences, but you can see the differences in just West Coast to digit here. This is really a specific shot play. If it's not there, we've got this burst concept that we, we really loved, obviously loved throwing ins in Mike March's scheme. But this is to the field here. We're going to get a one-on-one -on -one with a tight split. It's really meant to take a shot. So you get an opportunity to take a shot to the field with a certain matchup. But then if that's not there, we're going to run a burst in with this similar kind of whip arrow route, except this one now is kind of turns into more of a juke route. So instead of coming in, crossing the track of the normally where he's at and coming out, we're going to come in and continue across. So it gets into the same spacing, similar family. Another thing about this that I love, and I loved this in this system and do this still in offense when I get a chance to be around it, are these burst ins. So you're going to burst outside. So again, paying really close attention to, you want to know the detail that goes on at the highest level. The split here is two yards inside the numbers, two yards outside the numbers. For all you math savants, the numbers are two yards wide. 
So now we're going to, on our split here, when we run this, we're going to sprint to the edge of the numbers, get up to 18, and wrap in. Normally, ends in this offense back in the day were 20 yards. It's 18 on burst ends because you lose two with your burst release. So we end up kind of the spacing of this thing works out to be pretty similar. I just love the, uh, it really kind of puts a tough move on that kind of nickel DB type, whoever's playing this kind of uh, star player here. When you burst release this, depending on what type of defense they're at, you can all of a sudden really screw things up if these got to corner and the nickel or star trying to in and out this thing or bracket it in any regard. If they try to switch this thing off and you burst it, you've usually got the leverage on this outside corner. So just little tricks of the trade here as far as, you know, depending on what system you're in, you got a little bit more freedom to mess with these stems and releases here. But at the end of the day, this is the same play if he's just not coming out here with this little added layer of the burst. So lots of different ways to get there. This full play here, fleet left is the, full, is the uh, formation. It's a funky formation, what puts the F as the number one or normal Z receiver. Arc left, the protection. Really tough protection. Probably could do a whole video on why not to call that protection. Tight is the split. And then eight, it's a tight eight right here. And tight eight, man, I struggle with tight eights in practice for a long time in Detroit. And then I threw an absolute dime to Roy Williams once where he lost his helmet. That was probably one of my favorite throws of my career. But didn't really do a whole lot of closed tight eights. But then this burst four is just really a beautiful route. And there are a number of great examples of the uh, greatest show on turf doing routes similar to this. Now we'll show a few more modern examples here. Branch, bow, branch is just a must outside release go and an out, and then the bow is the exact same route. So you can see here, there's a bunch of different splits here that go in with this. Now we're incorporating different hots, but again, south right is the formation, jet is the protection, branch is the front side. So here's the branch, here's the bow. And again, guess what it is? Pure progression, right to left, all the way across. Get the out, there's that basic cross, and there's that backside arrow. And again, you can see the similar splits here with the dot versus zones. You can settle up, versus man, run out of it. So when you catch man, you get kind of the best of both worlds. You get multiple runaways, and versus zone, you can settle in and find a nice little built-in check down. All the way across to the check down four with the swing or check wide. And again, lots of different ways to do it. You can see here kind of a funky split. You can see here kind of a funky split. They're switching that uh, branch route down at the bottom. This here is a kind of inverted bow. To me, in most systems, this would be a different play. Now, at the end of the day, the spacing is the same. But again, the learning here is a little bit different. Why? Because normally, the number one receiver, we kept talking about cross the track, cross the track, cross the track. Well, now the inside wide receiver, and maybe it's just how they build in their tight end doing it. But now he's running. Essentially, that arrow pivot spacing can run away versus man and the basic cross coming from the outside. So normally this thing would be here, but at the end of the day, the spacing is the same. Bow is bow is bow. How they get there is a little bit different, but again, lots of different examples, this time with the front side all being that must outside release go, alert it versus premium look, man to man, bump, great matchup, etc. But really calling this, trying to work the out. If it's not there, you've got the bow, multiple runaways, can settle down on that little spot arrow route. Same playbook, different front side concept, a little CO here, corner out, I'm guessing, I have no idea, makes sense to me, maybe Colorado, who knows, whatever the hell it is, it's a variation of smash, it doesn't matter what it is for our purposes. So here's the front side, and again, you can see the bow element is the back side, two to three, again, different ways they get there based on who's who in the zoo, and to be honest with you, I don't know, I'll probably talk to someone in San Francisco to figure out how they determine who's got the, uh, maybe it's because it's a tight end and it's 12 personnel. No, because 12 personnel right here. See, we're figuring this out together. Either way, doesn't matter. Let's just say the normal way to do it is the number one to run the arrow, the number two to run the cross, but you can certainly invert it if you want based on who your personnel is. Another good example here of a little short motion. So short motion to the front side. Short motion to the back side, probably more relevant for this video, just to be able to see here. You can come in here, sell it like you're coming across, and pop out of there. Really nice job. Sim again, clean, simple, pure progression play. Different playbook here with the Falcons, but same family, same types of plays. Again, got the corner out, 
we've got the bow and again it's a little bit cleaner here now we can figure out f bow is telling him that he's got the arrow or the pivot or whatever they're going to call that in that route the not arrow as opposed to so they're calling out the letter of the guy who's got the underneath route as opposed to with green bay we were calling out the crosser so again different ways to play the same play you learn bow you can go to any offense that runs some iteration of it and be able to play the play so this is a really one of my favorite parts about x's and o's football and learning a bunch of different offenses once you learn the principles the bones of these concepts you can call it anything call it strawberry milkshake it is a backside in with some iteration of a pivot arrow to pull that underneath second level defender to try to rip this thing right here so lots of different ways to do it here they identify who's got the underneath route y bow y bow f bow and again, incorporating the motion, another great way to do it. I love, love, for all you offensive architects out there, coordinators, motion away from the first read. So uh, honestly, most times I think it's such an obvious tell in most offenses. If somebody's motioning, that's usually the number one read. So when you motion here and he's the fourth read, I think it's a great tendency breaker. Your quarterback's eyes are back over here first, right to left, full field read, one, two, three, four, a lot going on there. Again, same family of offense, different playbook here. Should probably, not the logo we're looking for anymore. But again, they called it something different here. They called it snapper at the time. It doesn't matter what you call it. The only thing that's different here with snapper versus bow, you should be able to identify it pretty quickly, is the fact that it's inverted, right? The number two now is running the arrow whip. The number one is running the basic. It's the same play, y'all. Just because they switch who's who in the zoo here, as far as the number two running the arrow, yeah, you probably need a different name for it, hence snapper. But again, it's the same play. It doesn't matter who does this. The read is the same. Again, you know whether they call it pressure or branch, you call it bow or whatever, it's the same play. Let, let that settle in learn the concepts, understand the reads, what they're trying to do, how they're trying to manipulate the second level defender, trying them to come down on this arrow whip here. You want this linebacker type to drop, see this come down, and then we are going to wrap this basic right around his ear. Just a simple, easy, pure progression, any offense in the league. Now we're getting into some super old school images here. <laughs> We've come a long way with our offensive install images. But you can see, again, a little bit of a different, whether this is spot, snag, hitch, it doesn't matter what you call this front side thing here, this way, okay, dart, I don't care what you call it, stub, backside, this is a bow. There's the in, there's the arrow. Again, crossing the track, really important teaching point. The number one crosses the track of the two, and again, the track is the stem of the number two. So imagine that being the stem. Imagine if that was a straight line, what it would look like for you to cross it. So you got to come in there. That's your landmark and come out of it for that arrow. And again, you can settle versus zone. A few more examples here. Again, this is an old school Tampa playbook, I think. 72 is the protection. Arrow is this concept. Bow is over here and it tells the check down what to do. He's got the wide. So again, the read, really simple. If you could line up these numbers, one, alert. So really this is just one, two, three, four. You can count to three, you can play for me. If you can count to four, you can play in the league for a little bit. And there it is. Again, really, really simple concept that so many teams run. Now I will say, I don't know if I have necessarily an image of it, but I can tell you just from memory, Imagine no tight end here, okay? So we get another wide receiver out here. Wide receiver out here. So this side is not this concept. And both these guys have go routes on the outside. And then we're running some iteration of bow on the interior at a three by one. One of my favorite kind of third down plays did it a lot. I want to say in Green Bay, but did it a lot, a bunch of different spots. To me, I loved it because if you like the matchup you like on the outside, versus quarters versus single high take it otherwise you got two good runaways versus potential third down defenses thinking man matchup 
man match situations where you're going to have to run away from defenders. So nice, easy, simple play. I couldn't find the image for that, but this is a nice way to just be able to see it at a three by one versus two by two. Here's another playbook. This is the Eagles. This is a different variation. Glad I just mentioned the three by one because this is a three by one variation of it. Again, the first thing to notice, you know, whatever they call it, I don't care. Mini me, mini who, mini, it doesn't matter. Okay. This is bow right here. Bow. So we already know what the read is. We're trying to get that basic, trying to influence that underneath defender to run out of that thing, influence that underneath defender, run out of that thing. We must cross the track of the inside wide receiver. So now because he's the number two, here's the number one, here's the number three, to cross the track of the basic or the crosser, you got to come in there and then come out. And again, you're reading it, man versus zone. There's that speed turn cross. Now they pair it with an option route from the tailback coming out of the backfield. I think this is a pretty good way to get like Sproles a touch. Then they've got a bunch of different alerts. So again, one very similar to what I just said here. This is a great quarters alert, usually post with another vertical by the two or the three. We've got a middle field closed matchup alert. If those aren't there, we've got a real simple one, two, three, almost turns into like a obtuse triangle read. Okay, you're welcome for the obtuse there. Again, different ways to do it. This is one of my more, uh, I think a little bit more into kind of present day ball as far as spreading this thing out and using this thing as kind of a hybrid primary read. Again, you know, got alerts, alerts, got a great one route here or one option, depending on what your tailback situation is. And you know, you've got multiple runaways versus man, which is really hard to get consistently in a lot of concepts that are so, you know, maybe on third down, you don't know what the hell you're going to get. You're going to get two man, you're going to get brackets, you're going to get pressure, you're going to get zero, you've got multiple runaways, great options to catch and fall forward for a first down. This next one here is kind of what I'm talking about when I'm talking about how I loved it out of third downs. Now this is from the Saints. And I think this is almost like a kill alert call for them. But you can see here, we've got the multiple alerts down the field if you like the matchup. And then they I almost want to say that this play, for me at least, I mean, I learned it as just pure thumbs because it looks like two thumbs going out and the signal is usually two thumbs. You put your pinkies together and it looks like this. So thumb this way, thumb this way. It's not identical. I think to being able to, you know, cross the track, come out versus hot, I think it's a little bit more of a down the field shot. If it's not there, we've got these built in double check downs. So it's almost like a, like a crossbow, like we're going both ways. Oh man, did I just come up with a new name for it? Yeah, you're welcome. Thumbs. But at the end of the day, say you've been in the West Coast digit system your whole career, you just show up in New Orleans, you got to learn the play. Well, you know, this play right here. We know Bo. Now we just package it differently. So maybe this is an option, you know, maybe it's a 10 yard out like branch. It doesn't matter what it is. You know, this concept, it's usually tethered to some variation of a pure progression here. It's alerts one, two, one, two, easy. So this last one here from an old jets playbook here, this is a red zone kill. What is a kill? That just means that you can come up and you got multiple plays called in the huddle. So they call the pass play, they kill the run play, the 35 Bob. And so what that looks like is if it's soft coverage, you don't like the coverage, go ahead and kill it to run that nickel Bob. And all that is just a variation of inside run. And what we're doing here with the war or with whatever they want to call it, you call it war. It doesn't matter what the hell you call it. Again, this is bow. Okay. This is an arrow with an in. It's a wrap in here. That just means similar to like the old school digit world where we're going to burst release that, get up to 18 and come in. This is more off steps. So make it look like a burst glance, except instead of a glance, we're going to wrap that thing in there and try to put it right around the ear of that nickel defender. So if that nickel defender gets depth, we'll just put it right on the arrow. If that nickel defender widens at all with this kind of burst release or arrow coming out like this, then all of a sudden we can got this window right here to run away from it. And again, if you like the matchup on the one-on-one, -on -one, go ahead and throw the fade. Not my highest percentage throw by any means. But again, love this concept. Super versatile, right? We've used it as the backside pure progression. Bow with anything on the front side. Branch, arrow. We've used it as a third down out of a three-by-one with a bunch of alerts, nice multiple runaways. And now we've got the capacity to use it in the red area and be able to run it with a kill or check 
not only you get a one-on-one -on -one with the fade to the front side if you wanted it built in, but we could also run it versus soft coverage. So great options in a bunch of different areas of the field. So that is the bow concept, really a very versatile concept that you can use both as a primary thing where you're trying to maybe take some shots in the perimeter. If they're not there, you've got multiple runaways, good versus man or zone with some potential to settle down on that arrow route. But at the end of the day, I think the coaching points are pretty universal. That arrow route runner needs to try to cross the track of the basic or the in. And then you just need to be able to settle up versus zone and run away versus man. Same thing with the crosser. If there's a little space in there, don't run to get covered. Have the capacity to settle up on that in or that crosser and find the soft spot versus zone. But be able to identify and take advantage of different leverages to be able to kind of manipulate where you want to go with the ball. And so lots of different things to be able to use. Love the bow concept. But again, it's one of those things where it's rarely called as the primary number one read. It's often always a kind of great second, third option because you do have the multiple runaways. You've got the good versus anything type of ideology where versus zone, it's certain routes where we're settling down, versus man, it's runaway stuff, versus bracket, in and out, two man, you get the potential for some rubs, picks, kind of causing some confusion based on how they want to identify the different coverage tools that they have to be able to get the leverage that they're looking for in their matchups. But at the end of the day, I love it because it's a versatile tool that allows you to potentially have success versus damn near anything.